Hey y'all, guess what? It is Bible story time. It is Bible story time. Okay, but this Bible story is going to be a little different because it's not so much that I'm telling a Bible story to you, for you, as I am trying to remember myself what is going on. So I'm doing some research for this project that I'm almost done with and I'm excited to share with you. And I got this amazing revelation. My husband, he's fine. He's in his office. And let me close this door. <laughs> I always have him in the background. OMG. That's why I be turning music on in my videos. Okay, so door is closed. Door is closed. Let me talk to y'all. I need my stand. Where is my stand? I don't know where my stand is. Oh, well. So, I hope y'all don't mind. I'm going to hold this camera. All right. So, here we go. I'm doing some research, okay, on some information that, okay, this project that I'm working on that I'm really excited to share. Very soon, very soon. I'm almost done. And so, anyway, today the Lord blessed me with understanding of this one particular area and I'm like oh as so I was writing it out but then it, it as I was writing it out to prepare it for this other project <laughs> I'm, yeah I'm full of projects anyway as I was writing it out it became something that I definitely wanted to share on my website so I'm doing the research and everything and, and in doing the research I find myself in the book of Joel and let me mark my pen and this this just really became good right it became good so i was sitting here so i'm in joel and uh joel um the 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 joel is only like what three chapters and the latter part of the book is talking about um the beating of these plows and plowshares and stuff into swords right so I'm looking at this, but as I'm looking at it, it is in preparation for this battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Okay, y'all just just wait, y'all just 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 wait. This is this is going to get really good. Boy, it's good to me. <laughs> so I'm doing the research and it says the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Here got my Bible right here. It says the, the Valley of Jehoshaphat is literally the valley where Yahweh judges. So so we're talking about these this last day this this let the battle of armageddon right we're talking about this right and so it says but no valley by this name is known there's no valley named the valley of jehoshaphat right and so it says most likely and this is where it gets good most likely this is the valley of jezreel near megiddo where the battle of Armageddon would take place. And then and you see this in Revelation chapter 16, right? And so here's where I'm blown away. So all last week, all last week, I have been listening to like over and over and over again from Jose all the way just just the the minor prophets just all of them like i get into the gospels but i'll go back you know even wherever i find myself in the gospels i'll go back and start again and at first it was isaiah and then it was jeremiah and i was listening to jeremiah over and over and over again and god had me listening to jose right and so there was this part you know i'm listening to it then i'm trying to read it you know the problem the reason why i have to listen to it is because i can like hear and hear the story but if i read I start asking questions so anyway I read and I got to asking questions I wanted to know okay what's the deal with Jezreel because Jose's first son was named Jezreel right and he was named Jezreel because of what happened with like Jehu and everything so anyway let me let me take you there let me tell you what this is so this is this is the reason this is why I call it Bible study time this is the research that I found out about Jezreel the name and see the names that we name our children this stuff this stuff be important right so Jezreel, here's the story behind this for anybody who's reading the book of Jose and they, they read that and they read like the children's names, right? So Jezreel was the firstborn. He was named after a land, okay? Because cause God wanted it to be remembered. He was trying to get the people to remember what happened back then, right? Just like y'all know how I've been talking about remember Shiloh. So 
<laughs> Shiloh was another land. So this little boy is named Jezreel. So here's, here's the story. King Ahab, the one who was married to Queen Jezebel. Everybody know about Jezebel. So Queen King Ahab what saw this. He like he would look out his window. Now he owned all this land. He was rich. He owned everything except for this one little tract. This one little we're gonna do it like this. This one little acre of land. <laughs> This one little track of land he did not own. And he wanted it. So he takes his little happy self out to Naboth, who owned the land. Naboth. Um, it's N-A-B-O-T-H, I think. He takes his, his little happy self out to Naboth, you know, because he's king. And he goes out to Naboth, you know, and he wants the land. And Naboth says, you know, mm -mm, this land is not for sale. You know, it was handed down to me from my father, from his father, and I'm handing it to my sons. This this is not for sale. So, you know, King Ahab, his face is busted. He's broken, disgusted, and he goes home, and he's all pouty and mopey and everything. And Queen Jezebel comes in, and she's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and he told her, I want that to like a land, and he said, I couldn't have it. And she's like, ain't you king? Don't worry about it. I got this. <laughs> and she had Naboth and all his sons killed. And she told King Ahab, okay, go go take that land. So anyway, um, God didn't like that. God don't like ugly. That was ugly. God don't like ugly. He didn't like that. So he uh, says that. King Ahab and like all his family, they're going to pay for that. Um, now, so this has to do with Jehu. Jehu uh, kills, I don't think he killed King Ahab. I can't remember how Ahab, ah, Ahab had died. And for, for whatever our reason, this didn't happen in Ahab's our time, but it happened for his son. So King Ahab and Queen Jezebel's son was not, I don't remember his name. Yeah, go look it up. It's in first Kings, second Kings, second Kings. Anyway, gotta go look it up. So Jehu, the, the son is now reigning. I don't remember the son's name. I should remember it. My goodness, I just looked over it. But anyway, uh, he was in this war and, he, you know, King of Israel and King of Judah, uh, they went up to do something. So anyway, they saw Jehu, the, the prophet, had this other prophet go and anoint Jehu to tell Jehu, God said, you're going to be king. And so Jehu gets up, you know, and, and so after he's told he's going to be king, you know, all of his little buddies with him, you know, they was like, well, what did that crazy man say? You know, and he was like, nothing. He was like, you lying. What did he say? <laughs> and he was like, they said I was going to be king. And so they all bowed to him. And so at that point, you know, they made a decision. Okay, so, so y'all feeling that way and I'm going to be king. Okay, we're about to go do this. So he went and he ended up killing... Jezebel's son who was king and then he turned around and um went to go and he killed him in Jezreel and then he turned around and he killed the king of Judah too who was with him he went and killed him um he he died in some other area and then he went and um, I'm looking for this king's name. Y'all know me. I got to tell y'all his name. His name was Jehoram. Jehoram. He was the one. Or it was I, I, uh, Ahaziah. I think it was Jehoram. Ahaziah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> he went to go kill him. And um, when he did... Uh, then after he took over, oh, then he goes to where Jezebel is. And so Jezebel, she, she knows her son is dead, right? So she paints her eyeballs black. No, but she puts on her, her, her makeup, y'all. That got me to thinking about the makeup that we wear, you know. Now, I, I, I'll wear some eyeliner. You know, I, I will do that. I got makeup, and I just don't wear it often because I've come to like how I look without makeup. <laughs> I'm more used to that. Although, I love how how uh, different women look with makeup on. They did that shoe. <laughs> 
shoot, makeup is something else, y'all. It's something else. But anyway, but it it caught my attention that she painted her eyes, you know, and I'm like, hmm, something to that. But I I, I have not been led to dig into that yet. So anyway. Uh, when Jehu comes, he's like, you know, whoever's for me or whatever he said, he said to cast her out. And we know that story. We know how she was thrown out the window and she hit the ground. And <laughs> when she hit the ground, let me tell y'all, Jehu went inside, whatever it is, well, he went inside, he ate and he drank. And then when he got through, he was cold blooded. He went inside, ate and drank. And when he came back out, she was nothing left of her but her hands and something else. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but but the dogs ate her up. We know the story. Go look it up. Go look it up. So all of this was to avenge what happened in Jezreel. But later on, Jehu's family gets in trouble again i think it's because of jeroboam the second i think it's because of him um but they get in trouble again also i think that part of jay he's getting in trouble could have been because he had also killed the king of judah i don't know if he was supposed to do that i think he kind of just kind of went over and did because they was they was hanging out together you know Hey, hey, so, <laughs> so that's Jezreel. So whenever you're reading, like in the uh, book, of, when you're reading the book of Jose, um, but not just Jose and Joel, when it talks about the Valley of Jehoshaphat, um, this Valley of Jehoshaphat, there, there, from what I've researched, there was no valley called Jehoshaphat, but really what they're talking about, what they're alluding to is to the last war, which is the war of Armageddon. And so the valley at this point that is really being talked about is the valley of Jezreel. And um, that's what happened. This is the issue that happened when King Ahab killed this whole or had his wife killed this whole family so he could take this valley you know and then the slaughter that was happening because he had like 70 sons i think either 40 or 70 sons and and jehu killed all of them <laughs> maybe all of them uh was killed and they were like in Samaria and other areas. And he, he sent word to the men. The men were scared because they was like, he done just killed these two kings just like that. It was like, mm -mm. you know, you say you king. We not about to set up a king and come up against you here. We about to slaughter these. And they and they did. The, the ones who had King Ahab's sons and was raising his sons, they cut their heads off their necks. I'm sorry for the graphics, but it's in the Bible. So therefore, go read it. They cut their heads off their necks and sent the heads all to Jehu and they made him king. So, but something he did, he did something specific and I, I don't remember that part. But yeah, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, when you read about that, when you read about the, the um, it's referring to the massacre that happened at Jezreel. And um, it's also on a deeper note. Referring to Armageddon. Y'all go check it out. All right, bye. That's my Bible story time. Bye. <laughs> okay, so I finally figured it out. Let, let me say this. One of the reasons why I listen to the audio Bible all the time more than anything is because I get distracted when I read because I read stuff and then I'll be asking questions like I'll be wanting to know. So I have to, in order to like really hear the Bible and listen to it and like listen to everything, I have to, I have to listen <laughs> to it because my eyeballs be just taking me off on this whole tangent. So whatever I was working on, I know what I was working on and I'm about to get back to it, but I got so distracted and so off tangent, but I got to share this because I don't finally figured it out. So this is 2 Kings chapter 8. This is 2 Kings chapter 8. All right, so I did this video just a few minutes ago about the Valley of Jehoshaphat and the Valley of Jezreel. 
because of what I was listening to in the no because yeah because it started with me listening over and over and over again to the book of Jose and getting tripped up on the fact because I started reading it you know so I got tripped on up on the fact that his first son was named Jezreel you know he had a daughter named Loruhama which meant not loved and then he had another son um, named Loami um, which meant not my people and then or I got them probably vice versa and then um, later on at the end when you see the restoration because because Jose was told to look I'm, I'm dipping off again but Jose was told to marry a prostitute woman a a, 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 a adulterous woman and but he was told to do that out of symbolization for how we the people of God act towards our Heavenly Father and so but at the end of it I'm skipping through a lot at the end of it um Lo Ruhama's name was changed to Ruhama and Lo Ami's name was changed to Ami which means that um after God gets past his anger and everything and he restores us back to him then we'll again be loved and we'll again be called his people so like all of that was symbolic but I had got stuck on Jezreel's name and I wanted to know like what happened and I went and did the research and I found it and so like I had got past that and um, I was doing some research for something else and it took me to Joel and it started talking about the Valley of Jehoshaphat and I'm like okay what's this valley only to find out that it wasn't a Valley of Jehoshaphat that it was really um, reference to the Valley of Jezreel and because I had did that research I was all geeked over it right so <laughs> so um, and being all geeked over it also there's a secondary uh, symbolism to that like whenever you read about that um, you're actually reading about Armageddon which is this last war and that has to do with what I'm researching but anyway so I did this video you guys are gonna see it or you have already seen it I did this video about the Valley of Jezreel and I was telling what well, it's called the Valley of Jehoshaphat actually but I was telling the story of what happened right but I couldn't remember kings names and like who Jehu fought and so you know me I have to go because I like to when I present videos I like to have this information for you guys to be able to go and look it up so you can read it, right? I'm not going to just tell you this stuff and then be expecting y'all to, you know, take my word for it. No, I expect you guys to go look it up. So I like to present the information so that you can go look it up for your own personal studies, right? And I got stuck again, and this time I was stuck in Kings. <laughs> I was stuck in, and I was stuck in, um... Second Kings because like the names and okay so listen I have to keep reminding myself that just like today people have the same names and, and you know you, you might know two and three different people with the same name you know their first name is the same but the last well it was the same back then I had to keep reminding myself of that so anyway I got stuck in second Kings chapter eight but I figured it out I figured it out <laughs> I figured it out so who um background story real quick background story background story we're gonna start with Jehoshaphat because it's like really easy to start with him Jehoshaphat had this son named Jehoram J-E-H-O-R-A-M Jehoram Jehoram and at the time that Jehoshaphat was ruling King Ahab was ruling but then King Ahab died you know oh and I did look that up the reason that he didn't die when God judged him for what he did with the valley of Jezreel taking that track of land from the family of the Jezreelites and Nabal um, God condemned him for that and he was going to judge but Ahab humbled himself before the Lord and so because he did God said okay it's not going to happen in your lifetime but it will happen in, in your children's lifetime so Ahab ends up dying and his son Ahab had a son named Jehoram too 
Jehoram, the son of Ahab, we're going to call him Joram, J-O-R-A-M, Joram, because that's, that's like the shortened form of the name. So Joram, the son of Ahab, began ruling first. He was ruling while... Um, he was ruling while Jehoshaphat was ruling. Jehoshaphat then has a son, and his son is named Jehoram too. Now I don't think he named <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think he named his son after King Ahab's son. I don't think it went down like that, but you got two Jehorams. But the the second Jehoram was not at that point ruling. Um, but Ahab's son was, and I remember Ahab is king of Israel and Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. But all of these are brothers, cousins related to one another, you know. But anyway, so King Ahab has a son, but he also, King Ahab and Jezebel also had a daughter named Athalia. So when Jehoshaphat died, his son Jehoram married King Ahab's daughter Athalia, King Queen Jezebel's daughter, he, he married her. And so him and Athalia now has this son named Azariah. Ah, 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 Ahaziah. Ahaziah? Ah, Ahaziah. Ahaziah, not Azariah. Ahaziah. Y'all, these names, <laughs> they names back then was just as bad as the names today. <laughs> so, so. Uh, Jehoram, Jehoram, King Ahab's son, is reigning, and he's a trip. He, he's a, just a whole trip. God don't like him. God don't like ugly. He don't like him. Um, King Jehoram, on the Judah side, the son of Jehoshaphat, he, in marrying Queen Jezebel and King Ahab's daughter, Athaliah, he becomes a trip too. I feel like he got demoted. I feel like he got demoted because his name, um, you see him initially being called Jehoram, which Jehoram means God is, Jehovah is. What I wrote it down. What it means. What it means. Jehovah is exalted. Jehoram, the name Jehoram means Jehovah is exalted. The name Jotham means God is exalted. So uh, he ended up. The Edomites, the, the sons of Esau, got tired of them. <laughs> the, the people of Judah, they reigned. And so they revolted. And the scripture says that the revolt is still going on down to this day. Like Esau, the clan of Esau, they 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 just done with the Israelites, with the Judah, people of Judah, the tribe of Judah. Anyway, um, so Jehoram... <sighs> The scripture says that, that his reign was not a good reign. God was not happy with him. He ends up dying and his son, Ahaziah, takes over. Ahaziah. Now, let's, let's get this together. Ahaziah, the king of Judah, is the nephew to Joram, the king of Israel, because Ahaziah's daddy married at the liar, the sister of Joram, okay? So they were literally at this point, at this place of bringing those tribes back together. Because remember, there was a split. And that split happened back with Solomon's son, Rehoboam. And Jeroboam number one took over. But when Jeroboam number one took over, he did not want the Israelites to go back with Judah, which is what they was like really supposed to do. Because God was just disciplining Rehoboam. But he... Change dates and change calendars. Y'all know my fight about the fuss about the changing of the dates and the changing of calendars. So he was the one that did that. <clears throat> and he is the reason why you see all these different churches with all these different pastors. People call themselves Levites, but they're not Levites. Not all of them are Levites. Not all of them are Levites. And that stems back to Jeroboam number one, too. And God did not like what Jeroboam number one did, but he continued even after he called himself disciplined, even after he disciplined Jeroboam. Um, Jeroboam continued to do what he was doing. So, yeah, all this stuff is getting ready to change. All of this is getting ready to change. Um, 
but but none of this the way things are today that is not representative of our heavenly father it, it is not and you only find that by digging into these scriptures and that is uh first kings chapter 12 and 13 first kings chapter 12 and 13 so that you can see that anybody becoming um priest and pastor and doing that that uh it's not that was not of god that was not of god not how we doing it today it was not of god so anyway uh Jeroboam did that so they stayed separated and and they never did come back together but at this point at this one period in time they almost came back together and that happened when Jehoshaphat's son Jeroboam married King Ahab and Queen Jezebel's daughter Athaliah and then they had the son Azariah so I mean, Ahaziah. I'm sorry, Azariah. Ahaziah. This, because we don't want to confuse Azariah with Ahaziah. Two different people. So Ahaziah is the nephew of Joram, who was the son of Ahab, who was ruling over Israel from Samaria. Now, um, when Jehu was appointed by God to be the king of Israel, when he was appointed by God to do that, he, at that point in time, and this is like chapter 9 of 2 Kings, he now goes and takes his ride and um, he ends up, there's some stuff that happened in between. Now I'm skipping over all that. He ends up killing King Joram of Israel. And after he killed King Joram, Ahaziah was with King Joham. That's his uncle. He was with King Joham because Ahaziah went with King Joham to go fight against them Syrians. So they back chilling, you know, but King Joham had got kind of injured. So Ahaziah was with his uncle. And then when all this stuff was happening with Jehu and, and they tried to figure out like what's going on, they now go out to see what's going on. So when Joram realized it was an ambush, and and he died. He had told Ahaziah to flee. So Ahaziah did. Joram died in Jezreel, just like God prophesied. But when Ahaziah fled, Jehu went after Ahaziah too, who was king of Judah, and he got killed too. And then he came back in, and that's when the rest of the sons got killed. So, okay, that's part. That's part two. That's the continuation of the story. I have the scriptures. Now you're going to be looking at uh, for what happened with um, for what happened with at Jezreel with what King um, with what King um, Ahab did. What did I write it at? Where did I write it at? I know I wrote it down. I know. I, what did I write it on? I don't see it on my notes. I don't see it on my notes. What um I think it's in First Kings. First Kings chapter 22. If I'm correct. Let me go look and see. Real quick. Uh First Kings chapter 21. <laughs> First, I was close. First Kings chapter 21. So in First Kings chapter 21, that's what where you see what King Ahab that started this whole fiasco. What King Ahab did when he ended up having Naboth the Jezreelite killed over this track of land. Um, so I mean that was a big deal because it was a massacre that happened there. And then Jehu, when he repaid the family of King Ahab, because King Ahab was told because of what he did. When he did that, because of what he did, he was going to be treated just like the family of Jeroboam. Because God was not happy with what Jeroboam did about how he changed dates. Because number one, I think it's in Proverbs. Uh, I'll be having these notes from everywhere, y'all. <laughs> I, I do. I think, yeah, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, where it, I think that is what God tells us not to add anything or take anything away. I have to go and look. I have to do that right now. I might as well do that right now. Proverbs 4, 
Well, that's not Proverbs 4.1. Okay. So, I'm going to have to look that up. But there is... See? You got to double check this stuff. You got to double check. So, there's a scripture where God says that we're not to add or take anything away. You know? And if we do, that the plagues and all the stuff written in the Bible, the plagues in the Bible will be added to us. Anyway. Um, and I'm not about to go look that up for y'all. Y'all just got to go read. But anyway, uh, I don't even know how I got on that. <laughs> Ahab was told that what he did, he was going to his, his, oh, because of Jeroboam. So Jeroboam, when he, he changed the dates of the festivals of the Lord so that the Israelites would not go back to judah for these festivals and then over time this stuff got lost and then he set up a place in dan and bethel i remember that i remember the two places now because dan was already known for false worship practices and which is one of the tribes of israel so they was already known and then the other place was called bethel where he set up the other false idol altar place for them to go and worship it and that stood out to me because Bethel means house of God and so he set up the other place there and then he made priests out of whoever wanted to be priests and God was not happy about this at all not happy and so Jeroboam's whole family line was being like wiped out his whole family line. Again, this is 1 Kings chapter 12 and 13. Go and look at it. Go and look at it. God is not playing. And we're doing today the same things that was done back then because all this stuff had been lost. Some people had been doing, like like it said, um, I forgot where I read it, where, oh, I think it was, I was in Deuteronomy where Moses was telling the people, you know, that they need to not do things however they wanted to do. And that's what's happening today. Like we have so gotten away from what our heavenly father wants and we worship how we want to worship and we go meet at these different places and we have and people get upset with how a denomination is running or whatever and they go off and start these look at, look at history and look at how all these different denominations got started people getting upset and so they went and started their own and uh, it's, it's, it's a mess that our heavenly father alone has to clean up he has to clean it up and we just got to do the best that we can to research everything that we're being told and, and make sure that like the Bereans make sure that what we're being told is in accordance with God's word. We got to research this stuff. We do. God says that his people die for a lack of knowledge. There's things and practices and stuff that is happening that is angering God. And we're standing behind it because our parents did it and their parents did it. And so it must be right. You know, the traditions of men and Jesus even said you follow the you you negate the the commandments the laws of God because you're following the traditions of I mean, it is it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy so all this stuff started with Jeroboam and King Ahab when he took this track of land the way he did the, the stuff he did the attack he did it God literally told him he said okay I'm about to do you like I did Jeroboam Hey, look, go read it. Go read it. Second King, I mean, First Kings, chapter twenty-one. He said, "I'm gonna do you like I did Jeroboam." The same thing. And when when Ahab got that word, he humbled himself. He he humbled himself because he knew. He knew, and he humbled himself. And so God said, "Okay, well, since you humbled yourself." I'm not going to do it in your time frame, but I'm going to do it in your children's time frame. So, um, Jeroboam, not Jeroboam, yeah, Jehoram, 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 not Jeroboam, Jehoram, Jehoram, um, he ended up getting killed by Jehu and all the other children of Ahab was murdered the same. They, they were all murdered. All of them cutting off 
that uh, family lineage. I remember hearing, and I, I need to end this, <laughs> but I remember hearing some, I don't remember who it was. Um, I don't remember what pastor was speaking, but they were saying how back in that time when a new king would take over, they would kill everybody related to that old king. They would literally kill all of them because if they didn't, like, there would be problems in that. So, um, yeah, Jehu killed all of them. And I think about that. I think about that when I read it. It's but Jehu killed them all. <laughs> he killed them all. And, uh, um, Seventy sons. Ahab had seventy sons. Um, Ahaziah, he had forty-two brothers. Ahaziah, which was the nephew that was killed over over um, over uh, Judah, he had forty-two brothers, and they were killed also. It's, and that's chapter 10, 2 Kings chapter 10, Ahab's 70 sons was killed. Ahaziah's 42 brothers were killed. It says the rest of Ahab's family was killed. We know that Jehu killed, um, or had, Jehu had Jezebel killed. All the worshipers of Baal was killed. Um, and then this is what it says about Jehu. Um, it says, this is chapter 10 of second Kings verse 28. It says this Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel. And that's like, the, that's the big deal. This Baal worship, like this stuff is happening today. It is happening today. And that was one of the reasons why I was looking over like all these different Kings initially. And I still haven't even gotten to that, but I was looking over it because that was the hardest thing. That was the hardest thing for these different kings to do. Like different ones who were trying to be obedient to our Heavenly Father. They were trying to go in and destroy this Baal worship. And they were not successful. Judah, Jehu actually did. It says, however, it says, thus Jehu destroyed Baal from Israel. However... And y'all need to read that chapter too, 2 Kings chapter 10, but I'm at the end of it. However, Jehu did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. That's the first Jeroboam, the one I was telling you about with 1 Kings chapter 12 and 13. It says, who had made Israel sin, that is, from the golden calves that were at Bethel and Dan. I just told y'all about them two cities. It says, and the Lord said to Jehu, because you have done well in doing what is right in my sight and have done to the house of Ahab all that was in my heart, your son shall sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation, to the fourth generation. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he did not depart from the sins of Jeroboam who had made Israel sin. So that you the that's the part where I was telling y'all about how Jeroboam made priests of whoever wanted to be priests, and he set up these. They had like churches some everywhere to make it so that you could understand it. They had churches some everywhere, and whoever wanted to be priests, you know, they went to a class. This is what you do. This is how you do it. Da 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 da. Now you're a priest. You're ordained. You're a priest. <laughs> Baby, God did not like that. Um. So it says, in those days, the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel and Hazael conquered them in all the territory of Israel from the Jordan eastward, all of the land of Gilead, Gad, Reuben, Manasseh from Ur, <laughs> which is by the river Arnon, including Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu, all that he did and all his might 
Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Jehu rested with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoaz, the son, his son, reigned in his place. And the period that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was 28 years. And so then it goes into the next king. Y'all, this stuff is really interesting. It is really interesting. And reading over it, I find that you can really begin to understand what's happening today by reading over all this stuff. So, I'm going to let y'all go. Bye! <laughs>